He'd seen that his father was in the party, the party that I was in for 42 years, the old party, which I still love. You know, your first love, comrades. You don't forget your first love. <laughs> you don't. Um, and apparently the current leadership is not communist. I have nothing to do with the current leadership. But we own this place through our organization in the IWO, International Workers Order. You saw the banners that they got from the IWO, that big red banner. The American Russian Organization of Workers, uh, there's a section here, got it from the IWO. The IWO, very important during the Popular Front period. Very important. I'll never forget when Comrade um, Gus Hall, there's him, picture right there, Gus. Um, he said, You throw a pebble into the water in a lake, the pebble falls to the ground. Uh, to the bottom of the lake. But the, rub the ripples keep going until they reach the middle of the lake or more. The ripple effect, that was Gus told, told, told us that. And that's what our mass organizations are. The IWO and all our mass organizations. Um, you all know that the history of this organization came out of U.S. friends. U.S. friends of the Soviet people, very important. That's why I met uh, Dan at one of the U.S. Uh, at, uh, left forum at, at a meeting from, from U.S. friends. Uh, and Dan in the back there, yeah, he got us the films. <laughs> All the Soviet films. Dan, they were in Berkeley, California. He went with a truck and he got all the films for us, which we have now in my house, which are going to Vermont. And I knew we have a building now in Vermont, the center. And all the films, from the, you can't get these films anymore. They're all made in the Soviet Union. Like the statues outside, they were given to Arrow Park by the Soviet government. Not the Russian government, the Soviet government. So those are all Soviet statues. Right now, the world is divided. The communist world, unfortunately, is divided again. Hello? Yeah. It's divided again um, as it was when I grew up during the period of Mao Zedong and the split in the world communist movement, the Sino-Soviet, the split, which affected every communist party in the world. It put us back. Two things happened right after each other. Khrushchev's speech attacking Stalin, and right after that, Maoism. They came hand in hand. One came from the uh, right of the center, the other came from the left of the center. But the result was the same. It weakened us tremendously. What the capitalists tried to do to us in the 1950s by decapitate all our organizations, they put Browder in prison. They put the leaders of the Communist Party, including Comrade Gus Hall and Comrade Henry Winston, they put them in prison. The theory was that if you cut off the head of a snake, the snake dies. That's what FBI said. And that's why they did that. So they come after the leaders. Remember that. Um, but the leaders also can cause a problem. Don't forget Gorbachev. Do not forget him. Michael Lucas, one of my heroes in Canada who passed away, North Star Compass Magazine. Um, by the way, I met... Uh, um, Jody's father. I met him in Canada at two or three meetings there. Um, and he did an excellent book on Perestroika, by the way, an excellent book on Perestroika. Um, you have to understand um, what that did to us. It's called Destroika, not Perestroika. <laughs> Destroika. That's what it was. And when everybody was falling over their head, and everybody was saying, oh, how great Gorbachev is. Reagan loved him. The woman in England, what was her name? Gotcha. She <laughs> loved him. And so did the communist leadership in many parties of the world. Thought this guy was the best thing since sliced bread.
You know, young people don't know what that means. And at, one, at one time, bread came out of one loaf. And then, and then they came out of a machine that sliced it. The Karen knows what I'm talking about. So, but uh, they all thought this guy was great. But I heard him speak at the UN in 1985. Gorbachev came to the UN and he talked about universal human values. That's when I knew something was not right. The head of a communist country, a workers' state, talks about universal human values, what we all have in common. We have nothing in common, comrades, with the capitalists. Zero. Your boss and you have nothing in common. Don't ever forget that. So when this guy Gorbachev was saying that, I knew something was wrong. And that's when I started to contact other people in the party, in the OCP, I call it the party, uh, the OCP against, per uh, against Gorbachev. And I was sent down to 23rd Street, put in a seat with a light in the ceiling. As it shut down, I felt like I was in the FBI being interrogated. The leaders of the Communist Party, uh, Chavez Tyner was there, Esther Moreau, uh, who said, you cannot do this, you cannot go around and attack Perestroika. We all agreed with Perestroika. I said, we never talked about it in a Congress. Nobody ever agreed with Perestroika comments. There was no Congress decision on it. It was all done by the leadership on their own, outside of the Central Committee. I want you all to know that. So be careful, just because a person is a leader. How did someone like Gorbachev get to the top of the heap? Ask yourself that question. There had to be something wrong. Now, of course, he only got in by one vote. I don't know if you know that. It was Kosygin. And where does Kosygin come from? He originally came from Nikita Khrushchev. So just remember that. But by one vote, he got to be the general secretary. And he destroyed everything. He saw, you know, he went to East Germany, the German Democratic Republic, the great German Democratic, there's no flag here probably, but I love the German, many of us love the German Democratic Republic. The first time an anti-fascist German state on German soil, okay? He went and he kissed Hanukkah at the 40th anniversary celebrations. Gorbachev kissed him on both sides. Well, if you're an Italian like I am, you know what that means. <laughs> when you get kissed on both sides of the cheek, it's the kiss of death. Okay? That's what it's known as in Italian. That means the mafia is going to get you. <laughs> and that's what Gorbachev did. He sold the comrades. You know this about Nicaragua. He sold Nicaragua down the road. He sold Ethiopia down the road. He sold the German Democrat, every single country down the road. In fact, Fidel, Comrade Fidel said, there's something wrong with this guy. Don't trust Gorbachev, he's a plant. And he stopped all Soviet periodicals that were talking about perestroika, he stopped them from coming into Cuba. I don't know if you know that. It's interesting. So Fidel saw what many of us others did not see. I'm going to make this short. Um, I'll end it with this. It's easy to be a communist for one day. I'm a communist, look, you know. <laughs> it's, it's harder to be a communist for a week. It's harder still to be a communist for a month. And those of us know what I'm talking about, the now party. It's even harder to be a communist for three months. They can't do it. Many people can't do it, it's just too much. So to be a communist for 60 years, to me is miraculous. <laughs> and so important. And Bertolt Brecht, you know who he is, Three Penny Opera, German communist put in a concentration camp by Adolf Hitler, he said very clearly, is our quote, to, uh, to struggle for one day is good. The struggle for a week is better, even a month. But to struggle your whole life for the communist movement, that is indispensable. That is indispensable. Those are the people 
The Bra family is a perfect example of that in England. Those are the people that kept our red flag flying. So I just want to mention that everybody here, I mean my friend Dan from way back, uh, he had hard times in the old CP, they gave him uh, hard times. But he's still here, he's here with us. Cameron is here with us, everyone here. When I first met Alex, I told Alex, you're a diamond in the raw. I said, any party that would have you would, should be grateful. And so I grabbed him right away. <laughs> I said, you're with us. Okay? Um, just looking around, I mean, Jake, when I first met Jake, it's a funny story, I gotta tell you the story. When I first met Jake, he had been living in Japan, come back from Japan, and he had been, from a background, of one parent was Jewish and one parent was not. So he was not really brought up with any Jewish history or traditions the way I was brought up. An Italian, a goy as we say in Yiddish, a goy. I was brought up with this, but everybody in the party, when I grew up, was Jewish. Everybody in New York was Jewish. I found maybe one or two Italians. Ernest Mayo was, was Italian, and Pete Caccioni. But everyone else, so I was brought up with all these Jewish traditions, um, uh, foods, different like that. So I came across this guy, and I said, my God, I said, he has to get back to his roots. And now I'm glad to say he's gotten back to his roots. I'm really happy to hear that. And he said, and he said, it is strange that I found my roots as a Jew in the communist movement. <laughs> well, let me add to that. Let me add to that. I found the party because of my Christian background. That's how I found the party, and that's why in Nicaragua there's a connection between um, the, the religion and the government, is Christianity. It's very understandable. Because what the communists did during the Vietnam War, the old Jewish communists in the streets with the rain coming down, singing Yiddish songs against the war in Vietnam, they were in their 80s. And all the 80-year-old the Christians I knew went to church on Sunday and you never heard from them again and everything out of their mouth was black this, Jew this. Remember, I come from a background where Italian Americans were anti-Jewish. I don't know if you know why. They said that the Jews killed Christ. This is what I was brought up with, all right? And remember the Pope during World War II was called the fascist Pope. You should all know that. He was very much, he had the bells ringing in Austria, when they had the Anschluss, and Austria joined, joined Germany, he was told the Catholic Church to ring the bells in joy. So that's the background I had come across. And I see these people marching for peace. These are the real Christians. And they ended with this. 13 years old, I read a book that changed my life. I'll never believe the book. J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> Story. wrote a book called Masters, I hope I, you should get it, Masters of Deceit, in which he said the communists are in everything. They're in the peace movement. They're in your churches. They're under every bed. They're in the labor movement. I said, wait a minute, you're talking about people involved with peace and churches and the, the working men's labor unions? This sounds like a good kind of people. <laughs> 